the Ajax is set to revolutionize the British Army's fleet of vehicles. The Ajax family of infantry fighting vehicles will modernize the Army in the UK and bring it up to speed with an ever-changing digital world. Against previous models, it has much improved lethality, survivability, reliability, mobility and all-weather intelligence, surveillance, target acquisition and recognition capabilities. Despite issues in the production cycle, the Ajax is still set to see action in the next few years and the world waits to see what it's capable of. Let's take a closer look at why. Ajax, previously known as Scout SV, is the reconnaissance variant of the specialist vehicle armored fighting vehicle developed by General Dynamics UK for the British Army. At first, the British program was known as the Future Rapid Effect System. Later, it was split out into two separate procurement programs. One of them was the Specialist Vehicle Program, with a main requirement of a new reconnaissance vehicle and a supporting family of tracked armored vehicles. This new family includes various armored vehicles such as a reconnaissance vehicle, specialist carrier vehicle, repair and recovery vehicles, and a command post vehicle. Different variants of the vehicle allow it to conduct various operations and with a high degree of consistency between the variants that simplify maintenance and logistics. In 2014, a production contract was awarded to General Dynamics UK to deliver a total of 589 specialist vehicle platforms to the British Army. This had a heavy price tag of £5.5 billion, which was the biggest single contract for an armored vehicle for the British Army since the 80s. The Ajax Armored Reconnaissance Vehicle is a baseline variant of this family, which will replace the previous FV-107 Scimitar and is based on the ASCOD-2 Infantry Fighting Vehicle. Its main armament is a 40mm cannon and it also carries specialized reconnaissance equipment. It will be used to gather intelligence for surveillance, target acquisition, reconnaissance and striking. A total of 245 Ajax reconnaissance vehicles were ordered for the British Army, including 198 reconnaissance and strike vehicles, 23 fire control vehicles, and 24 surveillance vehicles. The Ajax has been designed to be future-proof, so these new armored vehicles are planned to remain in service for at least 30 years. Overall, the Ajax is a much more modern and reliable platform for manned reconnaissance missions than the previous Scimitar. The Ajax has a turret and is armed with a fully stabilized 40mm cannon a very powerful gun that not many armored fighting vehicles can boast to have. It's an advanced weapon with cased ammunition. The use of this cannon allowed reduced dimensions of the combat compartment, with ammunition being stored outside the crew compartment. The range of this cannon is 2.5 kilometers and a rate of fire of 180 to 200 rounds per minute. As a result, this powerful weapon can easily defeat enemy infantry fighting vehicles and armored personnel carriers. For secondary armament, this vehicle also has a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun. Further to its impressive weaponry, the Ajax Reconnaissance Vehicle is fitted with advanced primary and auxiliary sights. It is also fitted with acoustic detectors, laser warning systems, local situational awareness systems, as well as some other bespoke systems. It was also planned that the Ajax would be fitted with a ground radar system. This radar is included to detect helicopters, unmanned aerial vehicles, and decoy systems. It's claimed that the Ajax is the best in terms of protection and survivability in its class. To pull off such a significant claim, the vehicle has advanced modular armor and innovative protection against mine blasts. This provides a high level of protection against small arms fire, artillery shell splinters, and mine blasts. To also help with survivability, crew and passengers are seated on blast-resistant seats, which are not connected to the vehicle floor, but are instead suspended. Add-on armor kits will be fitted when needed, and newer armor modules can be fitted once these become available. A baseline vehicle weighs 34 tons, and with add-on armor, its weight is increased to a massive 42 tons. 
General Dynamics has also fitted the vehicle with electronic countermeasures, as well as nuclear, biological, and chemical protection and fire suppression systems. To operate the Ajax, a crew of three, a commander, gunner, and a driver, need to be present. This vehicle has the capability to carry additional passengers, however it was not disclosed how many scouts it can carry. There is a rear door for entry and exit for infantry. The vehicle is powered by a German MTU V8 199TE21 turbocharged diesel engine, developing 816 horsepower. The engine is mounted at the front and is mated with a Rank 256B 6-speed fully automatic transmission. There are several variants of the Ajax, including the Ares Specialist Carrier Vehicle. This is not a typical infantry section carrier vehicle, but a combat engineer, battlefield reconnaissance or air defense missile team carrier. The Ares will deliver under armor and support specialist troops. It has a crew of two, commander, gunner and driver, and carries up to seven specialists. Its armament is slightly different, as it is limited to a remotely controlled 12.7mm heavy machine gun. A total of 59 Ares armored specialist carriers were ordered, as well as 34 formation reconnaissance overwatch vehicles. The Ares will replace the FV-103 Spartan, its current equivalent in the British Army. Another variant is the Apollo Repair and Recovery Vehicle. This is fitted with a crane and can recover or tow damaged vehicles. A total of 50 Apollo vehicles were ordered. Next is the Atlas Recovery Vehicle. The party trick of this variation is that it's fitted with a front-mounted dozer blade which can recover and tow damaged vehicles to the nearest maintenance unit, and this will replace the FV-106 Samson. There is also an anti-tank missile carrier equipped with brimstone standoff anti-tank missiles. All of these seem like exciting developments, but unfortunately there have been issues in development. Management issues and concerns about excessive noise and vibration have contributed to the program's delays. The UK's Public Accounts Committee deemed the Ministry of Defense's management of the Ajax program as flawed from the outset, while the National Audit Office warned that the program confronts significant challenges. Lessons have been learned from these issues, and in March 2023, the Minister for Defense Procurement declared a new in-service target of 2025. This has led to a new full operating capability target projected between late 2028 and 2029. Hopefully, there are no more issues, and we can see the family of Ajax vehicles show what they can do in the coming years. What do you think about the Ajax IFV? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.